to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. With me on, I have a very special guest. I have Ollie, the drummer of Bleed From Within. What's up, dude? How you doing? Fucking what's up, dudes? <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my best American accent, really. What's up, guys? <laughs> what's up, dude? <laughs> so good. And the guy really laughing right there that, is... Okay, I like every... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! We got Insid in the house, JC Tijin. And no muscles with the muscle tea. That's the way to be. How's it going, guys? Yeah. More muscle for the loving right there. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. So, man, I ask everyone I, I talk to on this podcast, where are you calling from? I am currently in Reading, just outside of uh, just west of London, um, but I am from Glasgow, and that's where Bleed From Within are from. All the all the guys are are back home in Glasgow, and uh, that's where we we identify from. <laughs> <laughs> solid, solid. Yeah, I I don't think I had anyone call in from there, so I'm going to check you off as the first. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to see how many people I can have from different regions, different cities, and countries. You know, it's pretty yeah. awesome. I had someone call in, awesome. Frodis from uh, 649, call in from Greece. So I was like, never had that one before. Checked it right off. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> always wanted to go, but man, I am ginger and I would fry in that heat. So Right? I'm yeah. half. Yeah, I'm, I'm half, half ginger. ginger. Am I looking at ginger right here? Yeah, well, I'm half. My beard's strawberry red. My strawberry blonde. My hair's a little yeah. bit more blonde. I can, see, I can see some rosy looking shoulders right there. Oh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> over. I get sunburned in the car, dude. I drive five minutes. I'm like, is my, yeah. is my arm on fire? What happened? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this light's a little bit too strong for me right now. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, 50 on right here. Dude, it's been hurting my feelings. I went on like a, I have a few six mile walks like in the last couple of days, and I wear a t shirt, and I'm like, the hours after, Mike, is my shoulders on fire? Did I get something through the t shirt? Is that, is yeah, that I think so? It felt like it. I was yeah, like, I've been, there. I've been there, mate. I've been there. Oh, it hurts. It sucks. <laughs> I feel like every time we went to Mayhem Fest or some like Wart Tour or something like that, every outdoor festival, Jesse would come back looking like completely blistered up. Death, death, <laughs> and just sweating at work. I'm like, I feel pretty good. The second I put a t shirt on for work or like that uniform, I'm like sweating. I'm like, oh my God. Kill me. Hit me with a water gun. Something. I don't know. <laughs> it's just on fire. It's also funny, too, when you, like, pat him on the back because, like, let's say you don't see it, right? Be like, hey, man, good job. What's up? And he's like, oh, my God. The pain. Oh, total sweat. <laughs> it's wet. Total it's awful. Wet. Let me guess. You don't tan, right? You burn and you tan for oh, like an hour. Um, you tan for an hour? In Scotland, we like to call it rhubarb and custard. Like, oh. the, um, <laughs> rhubarb and custard. I'm just, I'm just red and white. Like, I go, like, there. You can probably see it, like, here somewhere. Oh wow! There it is. <laughs> yeah, that that that's a real thing that happens twenty four seven. Oh dude. damn! I I'm jealous, man. When people go for a tan, I'm like, that just sounds like hell. I don't know, yeah. man. I, just... I like to call it, I like to call it a tan. It's it's basically sunburn. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just working towards skin cancer. Like, that's what I'm going. <laughs> oh, bro, that's unreal. Well, you dropped a. Well, you you guys are about to drop an awesome record. Let's talk about this fracture. It comes out with Century Media on the May 29th. And, um, dude, how excited are you to drop this record? Man, this has been, like, it's such a big record for us. Like, this is our last album on Century Media in terms of the contract and stuff. And it's been massively inspired by the crowds and the audiences that we've played to over the last two years. Um, just a really positive record for us, probably the most positive that it's ever we've ever sung about we've always been pissed off and angsty and you know that's the thing with metal but like this is a in terms of bleed from within this is the most uplifting that we could we could be at this point in time and uh it, it's it's a really it's a big album for us personally and we're just really excited to release it man we've had a great response to the singles that we've released so far and just i man it's less than a week now and i'm so fucking excited man <laughs> <laughs> This is probably one of the most anticipated records I keep seeing on like review sites, you know, like just metal blogs and all that. Everyone keeps talking about it, especially when you drop that uh, track with Matt Heafy. Uh, I feel like a lot of people were like, what? That's, so cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it was like crazy. I actually kind of want to talk to you about that track. What made you have um, Matt Heafy guest on it? And being that he's a front man, what made you just want him as a soloist? So... The, the the sort of connection to Trivium was quite a funny one. I remember just sitting on my phone one day and uh, running the sort of socials and stuff, and I was just sitting and I was like, "Holy fuck, we're getting like a we're getting a lot of people coming in. Like we're getting a bunch of new followers. We had like loads of likes. It was like a, a spike sort of thing." Mm -hmm. And um, ended up going through the comments and just finding who had tagged us, and it was actually Matt. He posted about uh, "Bed of Snakes." I think was his favorite song. Oh, so nice. we had we awesome. had Matt and Corey and I think Paolo as well. were just like 
posting about the album, uh, the previous album release either. Um, so yeah, we, we reached out to them just across social media. We sent them uh, like a care package of t-shirts. Um, and we just kind of kept that chat going online for a while. And then last year we had a couple of off days between festivals and they had a show in Luxembourg. And we went to the show, Matt got us backstage, we had some beers and we kind of floated the idea about collaborating on something, but we didn't know what it was going to be. And then when we wrote Night Crossing, uh, Gunze had this big open melodic section that was like perfect for a solo. And I remember saying to Gunze, like, oh, do you want to do the solo on this part? And he was like, I'm just going to hit up Matt, see if he wants to do it. And uh, Matt jumped at the chance. And um, yeah, he absolutely fucking nailed it. It was, it oh, was yeah. pretty cool to see, like just the way that it all fell together was really organic, really natural. Like fan, uh, Matt's a big fan of our bands and we are a big fan of his and yeah. I love how he, uh, how you guys did the music video, how he just entered the yeah. chat and like left. I was laughing so hard <laughs> at that. <laughs> yeah, man, he's, he's, uh, that, that was quite funny. Like, oh, put together by, it was, um, our guitar player, Steven, it was his idea. Just being like, all of our stuff's like pretty serious. And that's obviously a metal band that kind of comes part and parcel. Do you know what I mean? Like we, yeah, no smiling. No <laughs> smiling. I saw all the promo photos like, yeah. 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 But like, just like in real life, man. Do you know what I mean? We just we take the piss out of each other twenty four seven, and that's that's just us. That's how we work as as a group. We just like rip the piss. <laughs> and, uh, we were like, look, why don't we? Stephen just suggested, why don't we try this as like a a quarantine style video? And uh, Gunzi, luckily, like a bunch of the guys in the band do like uh, animation sort of stuff. And uh, I, we just all filmed ourselves and sent it to Gunzi, and we managed to put the video together, and everyone seemed to like it. But it was quite cool. For anyone listening, if they want to check it out, it's called Night Crossing. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Night Crossing, check it out. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. thought it was awesome, especially with like a metal song. I always like, uh, I always talk to like friends about it. It's always interesting because metal just fills up so much space. You know, it's like a lot of notes, everybody's doing their thing, and you need like space to show what you're going to do. Like, I always I liked your drumming on the song because you were able to oh, have really? fun. You were solid, but it was like you never ran over the song. It, like it was a solid this, bass, this is, and it, it was awesome. This has been like this has been quite an interesting thing. Like moving forward with the band, like we've never worked with a producer, but like in terms of just working together with each other, like we always push each other to like the point of we always push it our, ourselves to the limit that we can be pushed. But it's never what we've noticed recently, and especially with this album, it, it, it's not about technical ability now. It's about the ability to. You can push someone, but it's pushing someone to take that step back and having letting the song breathe kind of thing. There we go. Uh, especially with this album, we feel like, well, I feel personally like we've we've produced ourselves better than we ever have done in the past. Um, you know, and especially as a drummer, like I've been able to take a step back and be like, I need to let this section breathe, and uh, let Ken, like you know, it gives space for the vocals or the guitars to have like a lead part or whatever. Oh yeah. And especially where Matt came in on the solo, like. That was a part where I did, so, I, I, you know, I was pissing about a little bit in symbols, but like <laughs> <laughs> I was able to take a step back and be like, man, this is definitely his bit. Like, let's, you know, that that shines for a solo. I just threw out the album, like especially on the track that we, the second single we, we released, uh, Into Nothing. And that's one where, you know, drums definitely take a back foot and it's all about the vocals and that's what we wanted to push. And uh, the single that we will release uh, with the album called Fracture, uh, the track is fractured. We're doing the title track on that day. Um, that's another one where, you know, we think about the song as a whole as opposed to just being like, oh, I can do all this fucking crazy shit. Like, and that's the problem with metal because when you talk to people, it's like, oh, my favorite guy, look, he shreds. It's like, well, yeah, he shreds, but it's like, is the song dope? And I'm always impressed, like, with guys like you. I love that. Yeah, it's a song. <laughs> like, it's true. It's like, like both the songs I listen, I listen to the singles and I listen to a little bit of the album. And I just was You've impressed. Not to the cool thing, huh? Oh well, I'm, I because I, I do like a reaction kind of yeah, thing, so I reacted fine. stuff. Oh my god! <laughs> but I just like that's what I mean. I saw like all the stuff. You guys are like so solid, so much awesome stuff. And I'm like a drummer, you know, not as good, but I always like when drummers are able to have fun, do cool stuff, and you don't run the song over. Also, I love the snare on uh, was it two and four that like kind of mosh riff where you just kind of just doing like the four on the floor. Oh, man. Just the floor. That is that's classic bleed from within now. We 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 revert to that drum beat so many times. Like there's just so many riffs that the guys bring in, and I'm like, 
why don't we just stomp it? Like, why don't oh, we just Mosh City, it? bro. Don't be in the same room as me. When that Mosh, part... City. <laughs> Mosh <laughs> City, bro. I always <laughs> tore my house apart. I was like, it's over. <laughs> uh, I noticed that you got Adam Nolly Get Good to uh, mix this record. How stoked are you guys to get him? Uh, mate, he's been a good friend of ours for a long time, man. We go we go way back with Nolly. Um, probably now seven or eight years as friends. Uh He's always been a big part of, in terms of like the music community that we are a part of. Like Nolly's one of the people that we just always go to, and I always revert to this sort of phrase when it comes to whenever anyone brings up Nolly. I'm like, if it's not if it's not broke, then you know it, it doesn't need fixed in that sense. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got a great team behind us. They it was Nolly and Nolly uh, Get Goods and Erman Hamidovich. Uh, mixed and mastered the last album and it was fucking perfect and we've, <laughs> we've got on the same team for this uh, Nolly recorded the drums we tracked the guitars and vocals ourselves but then Nolly mixed and Ermin mastered and it's just perfect every time like there's there's no reason to change that up and like Nolly just gets our sound and he he's he wants to push us in different ways in terms of production like he's just got like a he's like oh guys I'm feeling this for your sound and we just trust him implicitly like yeah, I feel like everything he touches turns to gold, and I oh, feel mate, like... he is fucking incredible. I give it ten years, yeah. man, he will be the biggest name in metal production. I mean, he's already pretty much there, but Noy deserves all the love and all the attention. He's a fantastic person to work with, and this is basically a plug for Noy. Like, <laughs> you guys, you, get, you want your album to sound good? Fucking hit him up. Like, he's the guy, one hundred percent. I know Jesse's been talking about his um, uh, oh, the drum pad. Get- get good drums oh yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. i can't play an acoustic kit anymore i bought this i got a cheap e-kit for like 300 bucks and obviously it sounds like crap you know 300 dollars you get what you pay for but i got the get good drums and it sounds fucking amazing i'm like i may or may not have a sample pack coming out soon so oh really oh i know i have a a groove pack uh yeah that's nice i'll check that out did i heard uh because i got a few lessons with matt halpern name drop Big guy. Mate, no. Matt, Matt, is a, Matt is a good friend as well, man. He's a oh. fantastic boy. Like, he's a gangster, bro. He's got, that, he's got that big, fat, heavy hands. That... <laughs> oh, it is insane. Day, it? For the amount of groove in that technical genre that Periphery plays is amazing. But I remember he talked about Nolly. He said, like, his drums never sound as good unless Nolly's just – he touches the tom and it just sounds amazing. Did that happen for you too? Mate, there's, there's no way to really put it into words. Like, the attention to detail that – Sorry. The attention to detail that Nolly has. Um, so we usually, like, the typical setup for Bleed From Within, like, the past two albums that we've done, we'll turn up, like, the night before we actually start tracking, I'll set up my drums. And then uh, the next day we start about 10 a.m. And I'll walk into, walk into the studio and just see Nolly and we sort of, you know, we fist bump, how's it going? We're ready to get started. And he's like, I'm just going to tune up your drums. And Nolly spends about an hour, maybe, that's that's all he needs and then he's like can you go in and just play the kit for a bit i'll go in and i'll play and he'll record it and i'll come back in. he wants to double check the tones with me and i'll come back into that live room and listen to the sounds back and i'm like nolly what the fuck did you do to my drums <laughs> <laughs> it's insane man he just he has a fantastic ear for for each specific drum as well and he, he tunes uh, it's especially on era like with um fracture we weren't so we it kind of we went a, a little bit more like raw if you could say that yeah uh, it was a little bit more um just kind of hit it play like that's what we wanted to track like that moment but with era we tuned the snare to the note of the song every single time oh what and that was that was all uh nolly and uh, especially the track afterlife off the last album like he cranked it to like a fucking g or like a something <laughs> And it's it's so noticeable when you listen to the the album through and through. Like Afterlife kicks in, it's the same with the new album uh, Fall Away. I was like, right, this song needs cranked because it's like a quick song, and he just he pulled it up to the note of the song. Oh man, <laughs> it was not fun. great fun. I, I mean, for a geek, for a geek like me, it's just it's great to great to watch, great to work with. Are you um, a gearhead at all? Oh my god. Oh no, a fellow gearhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I'm I'm such an nerd. I think every drummer is, you know, like. It's bad, dude. My friend, my friend, are you a brand? Well, I guess you're probably sponsored, but like, like me, I can't, 
I couldn't imagine because I love it. My one friend's like, he's always into Zildjian. You know, he was from that Deathcore scene back in like 2009. Yeah, right. I'm more no, no, like, I, I, I do not want to badmouth any, any, it's all, right. it's all <laughs> personal preference, but um, I'm a Sabian Yamaha Evans Pro oh. Mark guy. And I, oh, I've right been sharing companies for like a decade, man. But even before I was getting the free shit, like I've been sharing it with them for years and years and years. Dude, can we fist bump over the ocean? Because that's exactly what I play <laughs> right there. I love everything. I, I love mine. I love Zildjian, but I always just found myself buying Sabian. I found yeah. myself playing Pro Mark, and I always kind of found myself Pretty going Paul, back man. to Evans. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's awesome. That's the way to be. And it's like, yeah, it's rough. Like, especially if you're not rich. I don't, I'm always blown away when I just look at symbols. I'm like, what the fuck's that price for, man? Like, that's so <laughs> oh, expensive. Yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a very fortunate position, and I, I never, you know, I, it's never wasted on me. And I'm, I'm very grateful for where I am in the sense that I've got great support from the companies that I um, endorse. And they've looked after me so well over the past, like, 10 years. And, uh, yeah, man, Sabian is the one I would I would just start. I would always suggest investing in them. Just hopefully, you know, if if you push it as if your if your band starts picking up, like you know, hopefully you get the support that oh, yeah. you deserve. Like that's that's the way to go. Like stick with these companies, so and good. Sabian's the one man. It's been great. Oh yeah, it's awesome. So how? Uh, obviously, everyone's quarantined right now. Well, what have you been doing to kill the time? Uh, well, we've actually started writing for the next album. <laughs> Oh, there there you go. Go. I love a band say that. I've, every band's answer has probably been that writing demos. Yeah, or, you exactly, know. man. We, we've got a load of downtime, and like we we had some we had some amazing plans for touring. Like we were meant to be on tour right now. I can't say the tour we were meant to be on, but it was a fucking amazing tour for uh, UK and Europe. And we had an amazing summer lined up, and we had a headline tour for the end of the year. So is that postponed or cancelled now? Uh, the headline tour will be postponed, and then. I think everything we we're meant to be doing this year has just been postponed. It's just been pushed back a year, kind of thing. Okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. And like the states is a massive thing for us. Like we are dying to tour the states, and we've just been waiting for the right uh, opportunity. Um, and I, I hope, hope that comes around in two thousand and twenty-one. Uh, we did have we had a pretty cool opportunity this year, but um, obviously, given the current situation, it's all kind of been pushed back. Yeah. So, um, I mean, like we've we've just been doing what we want to do like the, the the most important thing for us was releasing the album when we said we were going to release it like I, I know a lot of bands have pushed their albums back and i you know I, I feel for those bands that have been probably told that by the label and been like guys you have to push this back to the end of summer or september october kind of time and we were presented with that option but at the same time nobody knew how long this was going to go on for yeah and we, we've had phenomenal support from our fans both old and new uh, over the last two years and we did promise this album for the end of may so for us it was important to stick to that uh, i do respect every other band's decision to to postpone stuff as well like it's a very hard time uh, difficult difficult times to navigate i think uh, as a band or a manager uh, particularly um well the uh, front man of Paradise Lost had the same aspect too, where he's like, "Yeah, the the label really wanted us to push it back, but we were just like, nah, the fans need to hear this. We want to get it out." Like, man, it's, do it's, it's, a, it's such a big thing right now. Like, I think now more than ever, music plays a massive part of life. Like, um, you you just have to, all we have to do is look at our streaming figures, and our streaming numbers have just like skyrocketed, especially since the start of March or end of March when uh, lockdown was kicked in, in the UK. Um. You know, people are relying on that escape and people just want some new stuff to listen to. You've got that release radar on Spotify. Like every Friday you get like an update of new songs and everyone's talking about the new tracks that are hearing because that's all we do. There's no work radio anymore. It's like yeah. everyone's just listening on Spotify and checking out the tracks that they love and any new music that comes up they, they want to hear. So for us, again, we just wanted to stick to the release release schedule that we had in place and make sure that everyone could get some some new music pr provide some sort of escape if you will like on that day well, we thank you for that <laughs> oh, yeah. we've been waiting for this <laughs> hopefully hopefully you don't think it's shit and then uh no of course not no luckily i've uh like i said listened to a lot of it and it's amazing i'm yeah thank you pretty for happy the, thank you for the promo the stream thank you man <laughs> Cheers, man. It's awesome. That's nothing to do with me. I didn't even know you held it, but great. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the thing. I was like, I wonder, a lot of people push back because they said like a lot of like, uh, what do you call it? Like 
factories and stuff like they are not able to get the vinyl or the cds or the t-shirts made like so they get all these pre-orders so like has that affected you guys are you able to get you have all your merch ready to go for next week we or is it just have, digital we we have majority of ours like all our international orders went out like two days ago um okay, so awesome. this, is, this is saturday right now so i actually work for the merchandise company that handles all of bleeding zins merch oh there you uh, go. handles silosis as well and uh we um all, all handled and sorted like the past two days, but it's an international order. So there's a very, maybe maybe this is my chance to sort of say, like if you have ordered a Bleed From Within pre-order package and you're from outside the UK, it is on its way. Do not worry. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, we have, we're, we're, uh, our, our guitar player, Stephen's going to do a little video and just kind of update people on that and just, you know, we, we've got your support. It's fucking amazing. Uh, if it doesn't arrive to you before the 29th, uh, of may then just please hang tight it'll be there like it's a very stressful situation for all of the postal services worldwide at the moment so um everything has been sent out uh the hardest thing like you were saying it is production like um even our suppliers at this merchandise company that i work for we're, we're having a hard time trying to juggle everything at the moment but just doing the best we can it's everyone's in a real shit storm <laughs> especially, yeah. especially like sadly yeah band, bands are pushing the online stores and uh, you know we're, we're feeling that it's good. We're seeing a lot of sales online, which is good. It's translated from live to um, to online. But um, yeah, you know it's it's difficult for the suppliers to to actually get the garments like across the board. Oh, when I saw Lamb of God push it back, I was like, oh, because if they get hit with it, I'm like, everybody's screwed. Like they're so big, they're <laughs> no, on a major that, label. That, that was like, like oh man, like we, we, exactly when it happens to a band on that scale, like that's when we started like. That's when we heard from Sony, and we were like, "Oh shit! Like, do we have to? Pick back? We really want to stick to this." Yeah, and uh, you know, we stuck with it. But um, yeah, I can see on like a bigger scale why they would do it. Like, it, it, it makes sense. Like, I can see both sides of the, the story for sure. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm gonna run into our next segment right here. Uh, it's called the three random silly questions segment. Uh, you ready for this? That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we've gotten some great answers, so there's a lot to live up to for this. Uh, best tour prank that you've seen or witnessed? Best I mean, tour prank? Yeah, that you've been a part of or witnessed. Oh, my God. I can't believe you've asked this. Right? This this is fantastic. <laughs> Have you guys ever spoken to Well She Sleeps? No. no. Well, right, okay, they, they did this prank on us that I will take to my grave. It's one of the best things I ever saw. So, While She Sleeps used to have... I doubt they'll ever watch this, but... If they do, fuck you, Matt, because I'm pretty sure it was his idea. <laughs> uh, we, we stayed at there. They used to have this warehouse, and we we played a show in Yorkshire. And we after the show, I can't remember if we were on tour. It was just we played a show and we went back. But anyway, we were uh, we were all. I mean, I, you don't need to edit this out, but we're all fucking smoking weed. We're all getting high. <laughs> we're all drinking. We're all fucked up. It was it was good laugh, and uh, they. It was like a, a top floor in a warehouse. They had like this warehouse and they built this little like mezzanine kind of area. Yeah. And that's where the studio was placed. So we were up in this studio and we had like a little couch and sofa and stuff. And everyone's like hanging about, smoking joints, cigarettes, like everyone's fucking drinking and stuff. And at one point of the night, the drummer, Sav, just like, I remember Sav kind of leaving. And I was like, I'm the, I, I'm the drummer. Sav's the drummer. I was with Sav. I was like, oh, mate. <laughs> Where'd you go? I was like, I was totally fucked. I was like, mate, where are you fucking going? And he <laughs> so, like, after about, like, he disappeared for a while. And then I just remember, it was Matt was like, just pointed at the floor next to the couch. And he was like, there's our mate, Tom. Tom's gone to bed. And it was a sleeping bag with, like, long story short, they basically made it look like somebody was in a sleeping bag they'd put and they went all in they had like a little pair of shoes next to the sleeping bag and they oh put God. like a pack of cigarettes in the shoes like a guy was just drunk and passed out and Stav came back with a fucking spade a shovel and fucking whacked him right in the head <laughs> and he did it like three times he just went buff 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 and all of us like i just remember all the bleed from within we were like smoking a joint just went <laughs> <laughs> he killed the guy he... <laughs> we watched the first thing that i said was what are we going to do with the body <laughs> i just thought they had this kind of aggression for uh this guy this random guy and they they burst out in tears of laughter man like i think somebody was filming it as well like there must be a video somewhere oh man and, uh, <laughs> see honestly, 
I was fucking furious. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did not just fuck us over that hard. Like <laughs> on video. <laughs> We, we've, 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 yeah, we've, we've, uh, a lot of tour jokes and stuff like that, but that one sticks for me as being like the best prank that was ever played on us as a band because everyone, everyone shot themselves when that guy got fucking spayed, rattled right on his head, man. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I don't know what I'd I would have done. <laughs> I would have just shit my pants. like, ah, all right, like, he's dead. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's about he killed him in perfect time. It was in perfect time. <laughs> I know, I know I said I was meant to be done at half past six, but this this is a good laugh, man. So let's push it a bit longer. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. Thank awesome. you. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, question number two Uh, what TV show does your band relate to the most? <laughs> um, as a band, we don't watch too much TV. Like for us, like we've always watched shows and like a pair ourselves to characters. So like seventy show, like you know, Chris, you have the basement. Like you're, you know, like uh, people said, always sunny. Right. I got on that. Or if we had anything, it'd probably be Still Game or Burniston, which are two, two Scottish uh, sketch shows. Oh, there you go. You've probably never heard of. Nope. Yeah, sadly, I <laughs> if, if you have, I'd be very surprised. But yeah. Yeah, they are absolutely hilarious, and if you've not heard of them, then I would check them out. But is that's, that on that's Sky really by any to. chance? What's that? Sky isn't that the network or no? Uh, I think they're on BBC Scotland. Oh, like oh, it's, there you go. it's literally just in Scotland that they are aired. Uh, so okay. the, the Lemmy Show, Burniston, and Still Game. <laughs> Well, now I, we got to check it out to see you guys. <laughs> I get bummed out every single time. Well, actually, you know what? It's always interesting because I, like, I, you know, I'm younger. I'm into the internet. I understand how it works. I'm, but my into, mom, the internet. I'm into the internet. Google, great <laughs> hey, thing. So, <laughs> it's awesome. You can look up everything. But, you know, it's always surprised me. My mom's older, doesn't get computers. And she'd be like, hey, what about the Housewives of Melbourne? She always, like, comes up with these shows in other countries. Oh, and it's not great, but she's like, how do I figure out how to watch it? I'm like, it's landlocked. She's like, what do you mean? It's like, well, you have to, you have to be in Australia to watch it. <laughs> like, I'm sorry to say. Like, it's like, and I'm just like, I try to avoid getting into shows in other countries because I just don't want that heart where it's like, nah, bro, you don't live in uh, Scotland, dude. Sorry, fuck off. It's like, <laughs> shit. Oh, mate, honestly, though, you will not be disappointed if you check out any one of those three shows. You will... You might understand my accent better. Like, be, oh no, I definitely, I definitely want to check it out. Talk, like, we need to change the way that we talk for these, like, just interviews in general. Like, talking to anyone outside of Scotland, there's a, there's a there's a famous sketch by a Scottish comedian called Kevin Bridges where he says, uh, he talks about his rise to fame, and uh, he talks about his mates seeing him when he actually goes on the TV, and he's like, "Oh mate, we saw you on the TV talking like a fucking fanny." <laughs> Like basically that's the thing so like when i when i talk to you guys it's like a slowed down version of how we normally talk oh, just yeah. interesting i did not know that <laughs> it just, it, yeah. yeah i never it's not, it's not that it's very different it just has to be we just have to enunciate a little bit more and uh the way that we talk to one another it, it would be like you're on tour and i'd go okay yeah, mate can you fucking go and grab us that now you can use that for two seconds mate i'd be fucking absolutely classmate all right i'll see you in a bit oh there you go <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm awful. I, I my ears are fucked up. The second I feel so bad because it's not like I'm trying to be an asshole, but anytime someone has a crazy accent and my, like I'm just my ears are shot drumming without goddamn earplugs, and they just like you know I have a diner. There's this guy yeah, kind of you, you just listen you know, to a thrash beat right there with the oh dude, it's brutal. And I'm like I feel so bad. I'm like I love the accent. I always wondered because I fucking talk. I got flipper lips. I talk so fast, and I just like I fucking fumble over myself. I always feel bad. But you, like, you don't talk fast, man. To me, that's I don't. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, I've realized I've, I've hit another level. I've saw some people recently. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. Everyone's like, yo, slow down. I'm like, these motherfuckers right do here. You, do you find yourself changing because you do like podcasts and stuff? Do you change the way you talk to me? I try. Yeah. I've heard my voice. It pisses me off. And I'm like, yeah. oh, wow, dude, that guy has got a shit voice. Who would listen to this while I'm talking? <laughs> so I had to like edit it, open my mouth. Because I feel like no, when I talk, I, I could not be I could not be in a job where I had to listen listen to my voice back like exactly what we've done right here. I will never listen to this again. Oh, yeah. I'll, get told, I'll get told from some friends that I sound like a fucking fanny, and then that'll be. <laughs> well, I always wonder too, because I I, I I guess I never like figured it, but when I hear singers from like other countries and they they they, they sound like let's say you like start singing and you sound like crazy like just like not like Amer like American accent, and then like they start talking, it's like. Oh, that dude's rushing to shit. What the fuck is that? Like, what? Mate, like, Kennedy, Kennedy is a 
brilliant example of this. And like, oh yeah, Kennedy's had to manipulate his stage voice, like uh, the way that he's quite laughable, like the the difference. Yeah. He's got this amazing on stage persona, and he's such a big personality. But then he gets off stage, and he's just like, <laughs> just like all of us, like fucking humble person that just wants to get fucking pissed up with his mates. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, people always like that's that's a thing that i've i've noticed a lot recently with them um, talking about kennedy's voice and especially how it's developed over the last few albums but then they actually speak to him in real life and they're like are you the same guy <laughs> <laughs> is that what you actually kennedy's just like all right mate how's it going like Dude, totally fine he, he just delivers man when it comes to albums and he's well to me great. it's almost like more talented like if you ask me like hey bro can you sing but like in a scottish accent i'll be like no because it's gonna. I not only do I suck at singing. Run, nobody needs to. Mike, we've got Biffy Clyro, right? Everyone's fucking. Everyone. Can <laughs> <do it. laughs> we already got enough. Stay away. Yeah, we've, we've got somebody singing in a Scottish accent. We don't fucking need that. Like exactly. Yeah, it's crazy. And like, gonna do his voice. And we, it, to be fair, it's it's all in the diction. Like the, there is a. He's got a twang in some words that I think's fucking great. Like when it comes to that, like I, I do a lot of lyrics and vocals with Kennedy, um, and listening to him deliver the lyrics that we've wrote like so like for the the single that's going to come out with the album for example uh fracture that was like a song that i wrote all the lyrics for and like placed all the lyrics but kennedy's delivery of that is just that's the beauty of it i just send like little voice notes to kennedy and i'm like oh can this is like how i think it should go and then kennedy just delivers on like another level like this is my thing, right? Like, where's, where's the bottom of the screen? Looking at right, right there. Yeah. <laughs> and then Kennedy just comes in and goes, "Fucking crap!" <laughs> it's incredible, screen. and uh, he just he just delivers on another level. And just like we're talking about diction and pronunciation and stuff, he's just, he's got his way. Like he, he doesn't consciously try and make it sound like American or like commercial or whatever. He definitely has his Scottish twang on some words, and I think that adds to the beauty of his performance. Like that's it's personality, cool. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all. Well, it's also his rhythm and his like his rhythm choices are just awesome. Like the way like through this, like you know, it's like uh, and like his medium and like low screams. I just love. I was like on the whole album. I was like, dude, this guy's crushing it. It's the, just the, such a great one, one. One of the best ones ever. And this is just like a, this is a total like literally. I'm sucking you off, Kennedy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's gonna love this. But um, oh, the, fucking the, the second well, last track in our previous album, Ida. Uh, Kennedy's performance on that track. I will never forget the day where uh, we were driving to the studio for a rehearsal when Kennedy went, oh, I laid down some like rough demo vocals for this song. And he just put it on in like the car. Fuck, we're driving to the studio, he puts it on the speakers. And we were just, me and the bass player were sitting in the back of the car, me and Davey, and we were just like, what the fuck is that? Like, Damn. totally blew us away. Uh, and we were like, that's when Kennedy, to me, that's when Kennedy took the step up with uh, his vocal performance on uh, Ruina from the last album. And uh, on Fracture, he's just delivered that every single time, every single song. So he gets better that's, with every album. That's awesome. Uh, he'll, he'll probably never watch this, but if he does, then I, uh, Kennedy, that's me shooting your ass. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also, if you do watch him. Kennedy, you can subscribe to Metal Teddy Bear on YouTube. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's break into that, the that last. That was a subtle plug, subtle plug. Yeah, subtle plugs right there. All right, last question of the random silly question segment. What's your biggest pet peeve? What really uh, gets your uh, grinds your gears? Fucking noisy eaters. Oh, oh bro! <laughs> Mate, if you chew with your mouth open, I will punch you square in the face. Oh, dog! Don't Dude, be my Jesse father, right bro. There. That's no, I don't. I no, don't no, I'm do saying it, that you bro. get mad at everyone. You oh, used dude. to get mad at the Schubert yeah, all the time. Right there, that shit right there. Dude, Dude mate, so if I can hear you tune from two meters away, you deserve to get your fucking nights locked. Like, you know, <laughs> get the locked I almost fought my father. I'm like, I'm glad he had arthritis. I almost punched him right in the back. Get his arthritis acting up. Because he was like, dude, my summer, all summers. I remember when I was a kid staying home from summer, you know, like whatever, sixth grade or something. I'd just be in the living room. He'd come home for lunch and just just with oh like a mayonnaise God. tuna sandwich. Yeah, like see, because of your microphone, that's like a, a weird ASMR shit right now. Yeah. If you do that again, mate, I know Sorry, never I will I will fly to where you are and I will punch you a screw in the face. Will you give me a drum lesson right before though? Like right before or after. <laughs> I could do. There we go. It might be worth it. I might have to take that. <laughs> yeah, we, we do we do what we call we, see, we, we do. <laughs> our, our, our old guitar player had this great fucking quote for like I got a punch to the face. Uh Dave that's Lennon, he's probably never gonna watch this again, but this is a good one. <laughs> We call it, do. this is the big sleeping tablet. 
<laughs> and if you fucking eat, if you eat loud, mate, if I hear you tune for there, I'm just going to give you a big, big sleeping tablet. <laughs> you might be taking two right here. No, I agree 1000%, especially if it's something with sauce and you get that one little thing on your cheek. You're like, whoa, what's wrong? Like, why are you so mad? Like, shut the fuck up. Man, it's it's disgusting. disgusting. If your food's going all around here and you're, it's people that breathe through their nose when they're tuning as well. Like, ah. Oh! Yeah, <laughs> Mate, oh, that, I, I could literally kill a man. Like, or woman, <laughs> or, I, I would kill any sex. I would just destroy yeah. anyone. I feel like we just learned a lot today. What you identify as <laughs> sexuality, I will it's destroy over. you. If you fucking breathe through your nose when you're chewing. A spade um, to the face. But on a, on a on a second point on that, uh, oh, what was I, what was I going to say? The things that piss me off. <laughs> There's too many. I, I had a really good point. It might come back. Like, do you have another question? Or? No, that was it. That was the random silly question segment for you. That yeah. was the last thing I was going to say. I just wanted to say this. People yeah. that feel entitled. And uh, oh, yeah. we've experienced a lot of this in the music industry, and I'm sure you guys probably have too. Oh, yeah. Um, we are forever at the... We are at the beck and call of our fans, and you always should be. And I, And not only that, the beck and call of our peers. Um, we are insanely humble to be in the position that we are in and especially like you guys like jumping in an american interview for us like 10 years ago absolutely fucking nuts i would never picture myself like just talking to you guys being a you know a press outlet in the states wanting to talk to a guy like me well it's weirdly the same way like yeah Yeah. i can't believe you want to like you're on here (laughs) (laughs) that that that, cheers I only got my go. water. Beers for yeah. later, sadly, for me. <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> man. <laughs> as, long, as long as I don't hear you chewing, me and you are going to be cool. Dude, it's <laughs> over, bro. The only time I've ever chewed my mouth open is when I was fat and I ate something really hot and I just couldn't close my mouth. But I don't even That's chew. Cool. I no, just like, spice, spice is fine. I love hot Fair. stuff. It's, it's I usually just hold my mouth open away from people, let it cool down, and I just swallow it because I can't. Ask Chris, bro. Anybody? You, okay, here's worse. I almost rather you chew like that because you're an animal because when people say oh i don't like when you chew with your mouth open and they do nah, nah, and they do it at you i'm like oh, i nearly felt sick when you just done the example like bro yeah exactly dude it's fucking gross like i'm not a clean person like i shower i try not to be an animal but when people chew with their mouth open, there is sect of people lower there's everyone else and there's people that chew with their mouth i sorry dad if you actually that, hear this for some reason that's my that question man like jesse's got it nail on the head that if you chew your mouth open, you deserve to get shot. <laughs> and, uh, number two is if you are not humble and you don't fucking remember where you came from or you don't respect the people that are around you, like you, you build that. We've got like a we're we're in a very good space at the moment, and I'm very grateful for that. But it's taken us like over a decade to build the team that we've got. Like we manage ourselves. Like I manage the band personally, and. Uh, by that I mean that like I'm the the the, the person that sends the emails, but like it, it lands on me and it lands on the band. It always goes to, you know, if there's a decision that has to be made, like it comes to me, and then I go to the guys and I go, right, what's the vote on this? Like we look after ourselves now, and like that's an important thing uh, for us. And yeah, stay humble. If you are a, if you are an egotistical prick and you're in it for whatever other reasons than just playing music, then you also deserve to get punched. So <laughs> let, me ask you, let me ask you this then: for people that are not humble, is it worse? Because I almost find it worse. I almost rather, if you're talented, I almost rather like I rather a talented person be an egomaniac than someone that really sucks and is just as egomaniac as someone with talent. It kind of pisses me off more a little bit. It's like, dude, this is how you do so, it, bro. I'm like, you suck. I doubt, I doubt he's ever going to see it. Oh. And I'm not calling him egotistical <laughs> in any way. But let's reference Maynard James Keen. Oh, there you go. Okay. That, that, that's cool. All right, I've got two fucking tattoos. Oh, my, oh that is... That is sick. Yeah, that, that's... The two are my shit, right? They have been for years. Two, Pantera, that's my, that's my bands. Dude, God and, damn. Uh, there's somebody who could be considered egotistical or whatever else, but... It's fucking Maynard Jeans. Yeah. It's MJK. Do you know what I mean? Like, Kenny gets away with it, and it's it's an artistic approach, I think, for most part. Like, that guy's a celebrity on another level. But if, if you're in a band, like, a similar level to Bleed From Within, and uh, you think you're bigger than you are, and you're just outgrowing your, you know... 
when it comes down to it, man, if, if you just walk about the place like flinging your weight about and you think you're <laughs> Billy Big Bollocks, as we would Stop. say. I'm <laughs> using that forever now. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Big oh. Bollocks, man. If, if you throw your weight about and you just think you're great, but you're you're really like on an even keel. Like I think the music industry's changing. Like once these once the bands at the top, like the what would you call them? Like the kind of the, the legacy bands. You all know the bands I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Malika, Iron Maiden, Ramstein, System of a Down, like the bands that headline festivals every single year. Oh yeah. When these bands actually go, which is going to happen in the next five, ten years, they're totally sadly. done. Yeah. And uh, exactly, sadly, but that's going to be a sad thing. But it's the time for the new bands to step up. Which I had this conversation with someone recently, and that's like, uh, Bring Me the Horizon, Architects, Gajira, Deftones, like they actually take that step to be the headliners. Like when that step happens, it's going to pull all the younger bands up. Oh, it's, going like, yeah. it's going to take us up. It's going to take that up. Like it will take us up that notch. And uh, if you have an ego with you right now and it goes to that level, I will punch you straight in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we should made. We should made the segment like what makes you punch people in the face. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you've got an ego, I'll fucking knock you out. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's the way to be. Also, I'm just blown away that Gojira and Deftones aren't at that level. Like some some festivals, and I see them. Like I, every time I see them, head like they're like the the main support. Maybe I guess on festivals, it's always, it's always three names, and there's a headliner. There's another band, and it's Gojira. And I'm like, why the fuck are Gojira? Right? Not exactly. Yeah. Deftones well, second from top. I'm like, why the fuck are Deftones not the headliner? <laughs> there we go. Well, yes, Chris. Every time I see Gojira, for some reason, I don't listen to them a lot when I'm alone. But every time I go to the show, you they're like the best. That out, Jesse. Huh? You need to sort that out. <laughs> well, no. Here's the thing. I annoy him because Chris is a gigantic Gojira fan. And every time I go live, I just like blown away. I've seen him like seven times now. And every single time I talk to him like this, the first time I heard him, dude, you hear that fucking tone, bro? Like it was crazy. <laughs> you, hear like, tone, you hear that? Dude, yeah. yeah, every time. Dude, I didn't know what only pain was and they opened up with it. Everyone oh. in the crowd started jumping. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It Fuck kills me. Genius bands. I love them so much. And Mario, yeah. massive influence. Uh, Vinnie Paul, uh, Mario, and fucking Eloy from Sepultura. They were my drummer. Oh, okay. What a great three, dude. Yeah. That is, yeah, he's all different he's types thumping. of drummers, too, right there. Definitely. I mean, yeah, it is different. Like, Vinnie had this, like, straightforward, like, Vinnie was no frills, fucking balls to the wall, like, groove. Yeah. Like, Mario embellishes some stuff. Great love the paradiddles. That guy like paradiddles. Fucking animal. Oh, yeah. Absolute animal. I, I, we, like, we've, we've exchanged a few messages on Instagram and stuff. And he started following me recently. Oh, that's, that's cool. When he started following me, I was like, I need to up my fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> it's always great yeah. when you see someone like that follow you. You're like, oh, my God. Oh, mate. Oh, I, I shit myself every time. I was like, he doesn't deserve I, I don't deserve to be followed by this guy. <laughs> Who the this guy? Right. Nice. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be nice. That's the only thing nice about like you said when those bands go away is those bigger those like semi big bands that just for some reason never get the spots. Like it's gonna be a great day because they earned it. And also they're weirdly accessible for how brutal they are. It's Mate, it's the well, weirdest that's, thing. That's a beautiful thing as well. And I, I, there's another band I'm gonna cite for that in terms of accessibility that shouldn't be accessible, but it's Behemoth. Yes. Like um, they're part of an amazing management company, um, Five B. But they, those guys have just like nailed the way that they're like entering the music scene. Like they were an extreme death metal band, and they still are. But for some reason, they've just, I say, but for some reason, we know exactly why. Like the the, the way that they've handled themselves, and the music and everything else. Like they've bought themselves into this. You know, Behemoth has became like a, a thing, like a big thing, and that it's they're still an extreme death metal band. It's incredible to see. And they crush like it live every time. Like when you uh I feel like you hit a certain level when other bands try to like be like you or sound like you or like take from you. So I feel like so many bands have like learned oh, from Behemoth. You know, one hundred percent, man. Our song Into Nothing is a rip off of Stranding. Uh, stranded <laughs> we've, got the, we've still we've got the little peck scrape in there, like we are massive fans of Gajira. Dude, and we will, and did you know, like, like that's kind of what I was saying earlier. Like when those bands, I mean, Gajira are still very young in that sense. Like they've they've reached that level of success recently, which is great. And I hope Gajira will be one of those bands that we were discussing, like Deftones, Bring Me Our Eyes and Architects. Like they'll take that step up and be the headliners in the next few years. Yeah, 
uh, and they rightfully so. But we are we are massively inspired by um, Kajira. Oh yeah, and phenomenal. How many, and how many shows do they have to ruin for the headliner? Like, how many times are you going to bring Gojira out and expect to play can, better than them? Can you, like, can, you imagine, <laughs> can you imagine being in a band and going on stage after Gojira or Mashuga? Yeah, <laughs> nah. And the other one on that list was Dillinger Escape Plan when they were still. Oh. Going. I was like, can you imagine? Can you imagine being a band that follows one of those three bands and just being like standing on stage going, "What's the fucking point?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we saw Mastodon and uh, Mastodon, oh, Mastodon, Red Fang, and Dillinger Escape Plan. I, I, I forgot I, what I Red. Saw, Fang, I, saw, I saw that tour in Glasgow, dude, nice. and it was the best. After you know, classic, you know, forty-three percent burnt. They destroy the stage. And they leave. It's just feedback going crazy. And Brent, the first thing he did after the first one, I was like, how about them Dillinger boys? We almost uh, didn't come out on stage because everything was destroyed. <laughs> that, like... That's so master on as well. Like that sense of humor just being like, how about those guys? Eh? <laughs> Dude, it was insane. I went to all three of their last shows. I took off work. I went and they had three. Luckily, I live right next to New York. I was like, I have to go to all three. And it was just like. Incredible. Wow. I, I, went, was, I went to the last show in, uh, in Glasgow and the guy was like, the venue that we were playing in had like a, a ground floor and then like an upper level. Oh, and no. Greg, Greg was just hanging off it upside down with his <laughs> legs, like screaming. And then he dropped into the crowd and stuff and he was just running through the crowd screaming. Like, it was nuts. Next yeah. level. As yeah. a fan, I respect they decided to call it quits. But man, as a nerd for Dillinger, I, I don't care if they made the same. If they just made the, one of the records the same, I'll be like, for artistically, they would be pissed, but me, I'd be like, I'll listen to the same record every year. I can, if I can just say, Jesse, if you're nerds and you're a drummer and you're an intelligent, can we just agree on how good an addition Billy Raymer was to that band? How did they get better every time? <laughs> they how, went every how, time. How, how did you find a better drummer every time? Because how do you get better than fucking Gil Sharon, man? How, how is Dude. that a real thing? Well, that's like, Penny, how, how, how do you, you get better than Chris Penny? He's like, Gil Sharon. How do you get Bill? <laughs> Dude, they got a reggae drummer, and he just like, I'll do it, and he shredded. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it. What the fuck? I'll do it. Fucking, how do you do that? Like, you don't just walk in the fireworks like normally and be like, yeah, I'll fucking smash the shit out of this. Like, it is insane, and I always I watching him play. There's not enough videos on the internet of Billy Reimer, and I, he did one for Drumio, and I was like, can he do it every week, please? Like, he's so good. Like, just watch so, this guy. There is so much to learn from that guy. Like, so much. Oh, uh, dude, I think my favorite story, and I think, you know, not to take up all the time, but when I taught, I got, uh, like, a uh, one of the two, like, couple lessons I got from Matt Halpern, he went and hung out with Chris Adler and Billy Reimer for some reason. It was like a weird trio of people, but you know Chris Adler's known for the snare being, like, slanted oh yeah a horrible angle yeah. Hor i hate it i hate it he got me into drumming but i hate that angle like immediately when i figured out you're allowed oh, to flatten yeah, the snare big influences me as well when i was younger like that's so, uh but then yeah i saw that shit and i was like mate you need to calm that down oh like, dude well that's what billy said he's like actually you could do a lot more dynamics and work the, the rim shot better if you make it flat and that's like oh, bro yeah. you tur you turn told the, the the angled snare guy he's like the guy to flatten his <laughs> snare like that's so goofy. I, was I like, just don't understand how you wouldn't break your wrist if you're hitting that every night. Like it's crazy, bro. I think that's why he quit the band. His wrist fucking broke. He just can't do it. And no, I'm kidding. I know he's good. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one thing I have to say, guys, is I've got like five percent battery left on my laptop. Fair here. enough. Fair <laughs> oh, no, okay. That's the only. That's the only thing. Like I, I don't give a shit about the other event interviews I had planned today. This has been great fun. But, <laughs> it, dude. But my laptop awesome. means a lot to us. It really does. Thank you. And you're also allowed back literally any time. If you want to talk about the same stuff, we don't care. <laughs> I, I reckon uh, Kennedy would really enjoy this, the singer. So let's let's set up something with... Perfect. Oh, that'd be yeah, class. definitely, dude. That'd be awesome. We're all about it. I'll speak to, I'll speak to Press Folk and uh, we'll organize this again for Kennedy. Maybe when the album comes out next week or the week after or something. Yeah, definitely. All We're always bad. open. All about, and are yeah. you still... The, I'm just like not trying to like look like a great fan here. Are you so you're still taking orders? You're still delivering international? Or are you doing it in like in waves? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> there you go. Because I want to buy stuff, so I want to know. Like... Worldwide, yes. Okay. Yeah, awesome. we, uh, we sold out of the transparent red vinyls yesterday, but we have oh! solid, solid <laughs> vinyls are now available um, as an alternative. Uh, dude, you just messed out, Jesse. You fucking. I know. <laughs> I suck, dude. I've like I've heard about you guys. For, dude, this is you my suck, move. Dude. I do. I definitely suck because what I do is I hear about a band, I hear a song I'm like that's cool. I should listen to more, and then I just go off in a direction. And then five years later, I get into like like right now. I listen to the album. I'm like, 
what the fuck? I've heard of these guys. Why did I not just listen? <laughs> Dude, my, my, my worst one is like, I, I'll, 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 I'll get a t-shirt and I'll put it in the, the basket and I will leave that basket for weeks. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll buy a vinyl from a band and I'll put it in that basket and I get the notifications being like, do you want to buy this? And I'm like, oh, I'll get it later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Buy it, it's like, oh, it's sold out. And I go, fuck. Dude, that's... I'm doing that with Macedon merch right now. They have a Memorial Day sale. Oh, like... the edition stuff going up. Right. Yeah, they have a Memorial Day sale. I was like, okay, add this shirt, add this shirt, you know. And then I was like, do I want to buy it right now? I'm like, oh, hold off for a day or two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, before your battery dies, we should probably say goodbye. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> Keep going. yeah, no worries. Right, I've got like four percent left, so we're, we're uh, no rush. But yes, oh, okay, guys, right. I, I'll, I'll just say first, this has been fucking class. I well enjoyed this interview. Definitely one of the more enjoyable ones that I've. I have dealt with. There's a lot of press and there's a lot of shit interviews, but this has been great fun. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Ever since I've come onto this, like, because this is Chris's show, I, I'm just like his pal. I, I, you know, he started doing this podcast stuff, and I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm kind of blown away when some other people suck at this stuff. It's great. I get to talk to great people that we're into. We're into the same stuff. Like, it's oh, kind of like yeah, exactly. If they if they suck and they've got an ego, fucking you go right through that screen, Jesse. Right I'm in the right. job. I'll jump. I swear to God, I can't Nothing. fight, but I'm heavy. I'll just not no. not commit, mate. <laughs> not commit, dude. Well, well, thank you, man. Uh, we won't take up your time anymore, and we don't want your laptop to die. So, thank you so no, much no, for doing this, I'm, man. Notification saying uh, you, I'm on. Uh, well, apparently, using sufficient energy is a uh, Google Chrome. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> That's a great stat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, oh, man. Yeah. Have a great day. Enjoy enjoy your Budweiser, <laughs> and I know we will. See See that now. died a long time ago. You guys kept me here for ages, but yeah. And also drum playthroughs. Don't be scared. Just do. They all are, they're, they're, they're coming, man. We've got. Um, <laughs> I've got. Some, I've got some silos and shit lined up, and I've got all the bleed stuff coming as well. Like oh, it's uh, nice. lined up, and uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to speaking to you guys again, or maybe seeing you at some point, and we'll definitely organize something. With Kennedy, he'd, he'd enjoy us. Awesome. You guys are, yeah. Fun. And definitely, when shows get back on the road, I'm going. I don't care. I don't care if I had to buy five tickets for some weird. We're walking in the states. If I, could, if, I could, if I could finish it on that, like if anyone listens to this from America, which I assume they will, like we are, we are in your debt. We fucking love you, and we're we have all the plans to come to America. It's just it's a it's a very hard thing for us to do a band of our size, and uh, we're waiting for the right opportunity. And when it's there, we'll fucking be there, one hundred percent. So. Thanks for all the support. America's a massive market for us now, and we are insanely grateful for the support over there. And uh, the, yourself, Jesse, everyone, like, absolutely class. And just thanks for taking the time to listen to the music and have me on here. Amazing. Yeah, dude, no problem. Thank you so much. All right, brother. Keep crushing the Thank game. You. See you. Be safe. See you, man. See ya. <laughs> all right, guys. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Ali, the drummer of Bleed From Within. There's my nice little WMSC Hard. voice. I do this yeah. voice during the theorizer hour. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time with the ROM, and then he just comes in. Hello. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I think that was probably one of the most fun interviews we've had. Um, and I say that about so many interviews, too, but Ali was just so much fun to talk to. And he, I feel like we learned a lot, right? We learned how to punch people in the face. We learned what it's called. <laughs> when, to, when to do it. When it's, to do it. Time. That should have been the segment. That's actually what we should bring up next time. The next segment is like, what are reasons to punch people in the face? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that could work. It'd be amazing. I was, I am blown away since, uh, you know, you started doing this and allowed me to be a part of it. I can't imagine. We went from having just the first one was by ourselves and then we've had a guest every time. And uh, it's just gotten better somehow every single time. Like, we we did half and now we're friends with Pete. I was like, this is cool. Pete, like this is awesome. Shout out to half. And I was like, Pete was amazing. And then we we I met the guy from Moontooth, Nick, and we've talked and it was he was amazing. And then it's like then we start getting to people we don't know and it was still amazing. I was like, and that's what made me think. I'm sorry, I'm throwing other people under the bus. I, I'm not naming names, but when I see shitty interviews now, I don't care. It's like man, we're gonna have eventually one, you know. But it's yeah. just talk to people. I don't know what it is. Like yeah, get your questions out, but. They're metal, like I said, hot take from the first podcast. Metal heads are all nerds, nerds of shape, different shapes and sizes. It doesn't matter if they're tattoo on the face and they're muscular and they look hard, <laughs> or if they're just like a neck beard in someone's basement with a bunch of pop heads. Like we all love the same stuff. We're into it. It's you know, and uh, there you go. Show it. 
Ali's a dope ass cat and he fucking lo he's a loves drums. He loves shit beer and craft beer. He's more of a craft beer guy, but luckily he was drinking shit beer at the time because I can relate to him. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And then he was just like a cool dude. And you know, and it showed. And I also said that we were talking about. And I did a few reactions. They're in the can. So when you see this, they'll be out. Uh, and I say in one of them, I forgot which one, but I fucking called it, dude. I said, dude, there you can't write music like this. And given, uh, oh, but there's there's other music like that in the world. Nah, you listen to it. You can feel the feelings. You can read it through them. And you can understand they're not shit people. If they were shit people, I'd be blown away. Let's drop their album one more time. It's Fraction. Uh, it came out. Oh, it's Fracture. Out. Fracture. What did I say? fraction fuck <laughs> it was a fraction of a fracture it was i thought i said fracture i'm like looking at it right on my screen too okay anyway <laughs> you fracture. are e shin yeah okay. he, he's gonna hear that and not want to come back this guy can't get a fucking album imagine right. he just a punch comes right through the screen dude he's punching everybody bro <laughs> it's like family guy he's like oh an email from mr pewter schmidt <laughs> oh, fuck it. That'd be amazing. Dude, when he, was, when he was talking about that, that's exactly what I was thinking, but I was like, I'm not going to make that <laughs> reference. <laughs> but um, yeah, Fracture via Century Media, May 29th, it comes out. So by the time this drops, it might be out already. Um, and it was mixed by Adam Nolly Get Good. How awesome is that? So we guy's a gangster. A that, so awesome. Guy right doesn't there. make Even bad within. stuff. He does not. All right, uh, Jesse, you want to drop your your little socials again? Another little name yeah, drop. Yeah, and Insid on YouTube, Insid on Twitch, YouTube, youtubecom slash c slash Insid one, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Insid, and uh, Insid stream on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, yeah, I do I do reactions every single day. I'm working up to streaming drums. I just got my interface. I'm uh, it's being delivered. Oh, you actually ordered it? Yeah, I ended up going with a Steinberg because I've got I don't know. Yeah, not the Scarlet. Yeah, because it's sold out. And oh, if it's not sold out, named a song after it. Too many reasons. No. Nah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I want to get the Scarlet, but it was just getting to the point. I don't obviously, people don't announce when they're going out back in production. And I'm tired of looking at the Scarlet I want and being 200% price. And the Steinberg is a little bit cheaper and it's got the MIDI in and out. I don't need a good preamp. I'm recording an e kit, e drum. So the preamp doesn't matter for me. And if I ever get good enough to play guitar and sing and record it, you know, then I can spend a little bit more money and buy a better one, you know, if I really need to. True that. So I just decided to pull the trigger, you know, and uh, yeah. So hopefully having more drum stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do on stream. Maybe do drum covers. Maybe I don't, I don't know. We'll find out. It's going to be it's ever growing. We're figuring out what we're going to do. And then uh, yeah, growing everywhere. Check it out. Also comment what you you know comment, bro. Yeah, Hang comment. out with me. Yeah. Reactions. That's what we want. We want people to interact. So don't feel like, don't hesitate to comment or like or, and especially on the podcast, if there's a band that you think that we would mesh well with or you want someone to be on the show, just let us know. Drop a comment. You can hit us up on social media, wherever. Just get the message to us. Oh, yeah. Or just say hi. Literally. If you yeah. just want to say hi, good show. If you hate it, I guess you could say shit show. But, <laughs> you know, maybe don't. Maybe just skip our vid. But, you know, if you definitely, <laughs> if you like it, just say hi. What's up? Share with your friends. And uh, I'm still doing my radio show at 90.3 WMSC. So that's Tuesday night, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern time because we're from New Jersey. So, yeah. yeah, tune in for that every Tuesday. Link in the description. Smash that like button. Hit the subscribe. Smash hit it. the bell. Yeah. And uh, hammer smashed like. Um, No, but it's going to be gangster. I appreciate that guy was awesome. And I appreciate being a part of this. It's awesome. How Everyone have a yeah. It's time to sign off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time. Peace.